What's going on everyone, Matthew Osborne here, and today I'm gonna to show you everything you need to know to set up an Amazon account successfully. That's whether you're in the US or anywhere else in the world that is allowed to sell on Amazon. I'm excited for this video and I'm going to be talking about a lot of the mistakes I see people make when trying to start an Amazon account that prevent them from actually being able to sell on Amazon or just significantly delay the process. That is why I'm super happy you are here with me today. So without any further ado, let's get started. Since you are brand new to selling on Amazon and wanting to get started, I want to briefly share with you my story and how I started selling on Amazon back in 2015 thanks to my then friend and now business partner and friend Caleb Roth. You guys can also find him over on YouTube on the book Flipper is his channel name. Anyways, Caleb got me started with the idea of selling used books on Amazon. At first, I was not convinced this would be a good long-term solution or a sustainable business idea, but after getting started, I was really hooked on it. Fast forward to today, and I've been selling on Amazon for five years now, created and launched three different software products with Caleb to help others sell on Amazon, and I do this full-time and have been for the past three years now. I'm super excited for you today, but I completely understand that the world of Amazon can be intimidating and often difficult to get started with. So I want to help walk you through that and make it easier, allowing you to up and running faster without as many mistakes. I love Amazon and I think you will too for a few reasons. First, it's growing like crazy with no signs of slowing down. And it's always a good idea to start a business where the tide is rising, where the market is expanding, not contracting. In spite of Amazon's amazing growth over the years, the majority of purchases still take place offline. That's why um, it's growing every single year and there's plenty of room for expansion still. Number two is Amazon has a service called FBA, which means fulfillment by Amazon and this is an amazing service that allows you to send your products to Amazon's warehouse all together and the Amazon stores those products finds the customers sells it ships the product and then provides customer service for those products and a handful of other things this means you can find inventory send it all off to Amazon and then regardless of what you're doing you can still be actively selling on Amazon two of my biggest sales days on Amazon to date have actually happened while I've been on vacation at the time but it didn't matter because I didn't work I did all the work up front and now the business could run without me being there. The third reason I recommend selling on Amazon is because there are so many different things you can do and so many ways you can do it um, that you're not pigeonholed into one product and you're not bound to one specific thing. There's so many different avenues you can pursue. So with that said, here are a few things to remember as we get started here. This video is not just for those of you in the US. As I said, it works the same for Canada, UK, Europe, nearly any other country. You don't have to live in the US to even be able to sell on the US marketplace either. You can start a business in the UK then sell in the US marketplace. There's a few more steps and certain product limitations, but the sign up process for Amazon is extremely similar. Another thing to remember is that you really should know what you plan to sell before you start this Amazon account. There is a monthly fee attached to Seller Central. You can call their customer service and downgrade yourself to a free account, but really it's best to know what you plan to sell before you start getting signed up. I recommend selling used books is a great way to get started. Uh, they're easy to find, they're cheap to buy, they're easy to ship, and they can sell for a very high profit margin on Amazon. I have a ton of videos on how to sell used books specifically on my channel, but wait until after this video is finished to actually go watch those videos. Now, here is what you'll need to actually sign up. You're going to need an ID, which can be in the form of a passport or a driver's license, and then you're going to need a bank statement. Lastly, before we jump into Seller Central, we quickly need to discuss what it means to start a business account or an individual account on Amazon. I highly recommend starting as a business, and you can start as an individual and move to a business account later in the future, but this can cause tax complications. You can be issued separate 1099Ks and other headaches. In addition, setting up a legal business is fairly quick, easy, and really a cheap process that also gives you added legal protection. Um, and the process of setting up a business really differs in other countries, so I can really only speak to the US process in this video for starting a business. But the main three things you will need to sign up as a business account is an LLC, an EIN, and a business bank account. Let's break down how to get each of those three things really quickly. All right, if you do want to start with a business account, as I recommend, here is a simple process in the US to go about doing that, okay? The first thing we're going to do is we're going to go over here and we're just going to search for your state and then LLC registration, okay? This is something you can have a service do, but this is also something you can do yourself uh, that's going to be a lot cheaper and just as easy for the most part, okay? I registered myself in Colorado when I created my business. It was extremely cheap very quickly. Uh, was able to be done. So you don't need to have a service do it, but we'll talk about a service if you want that. So Colorado LLC registration is an example. Use your state. Scroll down past the ads, then you're going to want to use the first one 
Um, that's either a .gov or a .co .us. You can see that one is from the state. So we're going to click File a Form, Colorado Secretary of State. Your, your state is going to be very similar in the process. Then right here we can see Limited Liability Company. We're going to click on that. It's going to first ask us what name we want to name the business to make sure it's available. And once we do that, we pay a small fee, put the information for who owns the business. And then after you pay the fee, they'll create your incorporation papers. Um, for your business and the legal documents you'll need. The next thing you want to do is create an EIN, which is an employer identification number. This is something completely free to get from the government. You're just going to type in create EIN in Google, um, scroll past the ads again, and then irs.gov. You're going to click this one, apply for an employer identification number. Scroll down and hit apply now. Um, it's super easy. You're going to use your LLC information you just uh, created. Create your EIN number, and you're going to want to save this number um, for all future documents. You're going to use this in your taxes, a bunch of different things you'll need this number for. So save your incorporation documents and your employer identification number. The next thing you'll need is a business bank account. A great option that I absolutely love is something called ASLO, A-Z-L-O. I'm not paid by them. I don't have an affiliate thing for them. I've just used them. They're free. It's free to send money around. It's a great business bank account, especially if you're getting started. You're going to type in AZLO, um, go to ASLO.com and create your new business bank account. It's free to make, like I said. You're going to need those incorporation documents and you're going to need that EIN number to start this business bank account. Again, with Amazon in mind, keep all of these addresses and names similar throughout all of this. That way there's no discrepancies when submitting these documents to Amazon. So LLC, EIN, and then start a business bank account. Have those three things in place and then let's move on to the next section of actually getting started creating an Amazon account. All right, now let's actually begin the process of signing up for a Seller Central account. You're gonna go over to sellercentral.amazon.com. You can also just Google Seller Central. On this home page, you're gonna click sign up. Next, you're gonna actually create a new Amazon account. You likely already have an individual account you buy everything from on Amazon. If you shop on Amazon, you're gonna to wanna to create an account for your business. Um, so you can use your name, put in your email, of course, make up a password, and then click next. All right, after that, we're going to see over here, we're going to select business location. Oh, I'm going to use US for this example. Click agree and continue. Oh, no, sorry, business type. This is where you choose whether it's an individual business or the one you just created. So we're going to do privately owned business. Business name used to register at the state or federal government. This is what your LLC's name is that you just created. Put that in here. If you're using an individual account, this will just be your name. And up here, you're going to do, no, I'm an individual if you're signing up for an individual account. In this example, we're gonna be signing up as a business, so privately owned business. And then we're gonna put in the name right here. I'm gonna put Osborne Limited. I confirm that my business identity is correct. Agree and continue. All right, now we're on to the next page, company and registration number. This is going to be your EIN. Paste that EIN number just created right here. Um, if you're doing individual account, this will look slightly different, but it'll just ask for your social security number instead of an EIN. And then we got to verify our address. We can put our address in right here. It's going to pull it from your Amazon account. Um, and then we're going to verify our phone numbers. You're going to type in your phone number here. It'll send you a text message. You guys have been through this process before. Verify your phone number and then input the primary contact person on this page. All right, next we're on to seller information. This is going to be all of your personal information. Even though you're signing up as a business, you're going to have to put in personal information so they know who the main contact is for the business. So country of citizenship, country of birth, date of birth. Uh, you're going to have your address here again. It's going to verify your mobile number again. Um, and then Matthew David Osborne, my name. Uh, is a beneficiary owner of the business or is the legal representation of the business? Um, I'm going to select this and I'm the legal representation for the business. Um, I've added all the beneficial owners for the business. Yes, this is a single member LLC I have. Likely yours will be too if you just started it. So you'll click yes on that. This is the, also the page after you select your citizenship and country of birth that you're going to be inputting either your ID or your passport. It'll request that after you select your country uh, that you live in and where you're born. All right, next you're going to be to the billing section. This is where you're going to put in your account information where they can charge you for your monthly reoccurring fee. And also if you ever have storage fees, your Amazon fees, things like that will also come out of this bank account and where they're gonna deposit money into. So they're basically telling you the bank account needs to be a valid bank, all these different things. You have to hit I understand to get to the next page. 
And then it's gonna have you do your account holder name, your nine digit routing number, bank account number, all that different stuff, financial institution. Um, name as it appears on the bank documents. Let me double check here. Account holder name must match the bank. Do not include the bank itself, um, blah, 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 blah. So this will be your business name. Uh, if that's how it appears in your bank documents, you might wanna check that to double check it's your business name showing up on those bank documents. But you'll fill in that bank account information here and then click verify bank account. All right, then it's gonna tell you your bank account was linked successfully, click continue. And then we're gonna be on to the billing information where you put in your credit card details like I was telling you where they're gonna charge you uh, for any fees you have in your account. Put in your credit card information here along with that billing address, make sure it matches the one for this specific credit card and then click next. All right, next we're gonna be choosing your store name and then we're gonna be answering some basic questions from Amazon. So the first thing, the store name does not have to match your business name, it can be something else. I made up cleaning essentials for this, it happened to be available. Uh, do you have UPCs? This is just a product code for each of your products, click yes. Uh, diversity certification, this is up to you on your business. Uh, I'm not minority or women owned or veteran owned or LGBT owned business, so I put no. Uh, are you the manufacturer or brand owner? No, um, and then click next. If you're creating your own product, you would be the manufacturer brand owner, uh, but I am not in this case, so I'm gonna click no and then click next. All right, finally, we're to the verification section, section five, last section here. Um, and we're gonna be going over all of our documentation. They're gonna give you um, your name, your date of birth, your country of origin, your driver's license number, all that stuff. Now they're asking you to actually upload those documents. So identity document, this is gonna be either your passport or your ID. You're gonna upload the front side and then a picture of the back side. Um, it's gonna show you your residential address and then down here, the additional document will be a bank statement and you can upload that bank statement right here. All right, after you have uploaded those documents, you're gonna click submit and this submits the application to Amazon. You might be requested to do one last step which is um, a tax, I believe they call it a tax interview or something along that nature. They're gonna ask you some tax questions on how you want to be taxed. This is completely dependent on your unique situation and your business or what country you're starting in. So you'll wanna go through this process and answer all the questions uh, as you see fit, and then that will actually finally complete your application and submit it to Amazon. Okay, now let's break down the top things that delay or prevent people from being able to create an Amazon account. The number one thing, and I recently ran into this helping a friend start a new account, is that your documents are not clear enough or they're not complete. These are not individuals reading each application, it's a computer. So if your document is formatted weird, not clear, not complete, the system's just gonna automatically reject it. Make sure you can read everything on your ID or passport, make sure there's no glares, and that it's completely in focus. For your bank statement, don't clip off the first page or hide information. Include the entire PDF your bank gives you that includes all transactions, your bank account number, your name, and your address. In addition, Amazon likes to see consistency and any inconsistencies will throw up red flags in their system and get accounts rejected. For example, my friend started a business Amazon account but then used her personal bank account and Amazon noticed the address she gave on her bank account was different than the address for her business so it just rejected the application. You need to use the same address and name for all the documents that you use when you sign up. That's why having a new business bank account with the same address in your business and corporation documents is a great way to get your Amazon account approved very quickly. If you are from another country, you can convert those documents to English for a quicker approval time. I've not done this myself but I've seen multiple other YouTube channels demonstrate that when documents are translated to English, the accounts are approved faster because as I said, it's machine reading these and the easier you can do that without as many variances to throw it off, the better your account will be at getting approved. Another tip people get wrong is using temporary information with the intention to change it later don't do it. Okay, it can cause conflicts like the address one I mentioned above. Bank accounts can also be difficult to change in the future, so start off with the bank account you plan to use from the beginning. When signing up, you'll also be requested to make a name for your account that customers will see when they purchase products. This doesn't have to match your business name. Your business could be Osborne Limited, and your store could be Creative Apparel. They don't need to match, but make sure to use something general enough that you're not pigeonholing yourself into one specific niche on Amazon. If you plan to wholesale cooking spatulas, don't name your business the Spatula King, because 
then down the road, if you want to sell another cooking product, it's going to seem off. Although you can easily change the store name and it's not that hard. It's not the end of the world if you do choose something a little too specific to begin with. Lastly, this is not something uh, people do, but rather something you should be aware of when you're trying to start a new Amazon account. Amazon's unpredictable. There are times I've seen people get a new account approved within an hour. Other times I've seen it take three or more weeks to approve an account. This is sadly something outside of your control. What is in your control, however, is how you respond to Amazon. Be sure to closely monitor the email you give them when applying. Uh, if they need further documentations or corrections, they will email you. The faster you get back to them, the quicker your account can be approved. The last thing you wanna do is miss an email, go three weeks thinking it's just taking a long time for them to approve your account, just to find out the email you the day after you applied and you just missed that email. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you have a crazy successful Amazon business and that it brings you the income and freedom you desire as it does for me. Take this one last tip with you as you leave this video. Uh, it takes time and those that are successful simply don't quit. Okay, Be consistent and keep working at it and make it work for you and you can be successful starting and selling on Amazon. If you want to learn more about how you can start selling used books specifically on Amazon, head over to my 100 book challenge playlist here on the channel also linked to below and you can see how I started an Amazon business from scratch and built it up over 12 weeks documenting the entire process. I will see you guys in the next video.